Ilagay muna natin si Mama na nagluluto, si Tatay, yung mga kapatid natin. Magsalasala muna tayo sa ating sala para bigyan ng papuri ang ating Panginoon. So yun ay naanyahan ko po tayo lahat na tumayo at umami.
greatly on every song we've ever seen. Continue to be the king in our lives. We may fail every day, but you are not.
see mold us use us by God and send us that your name will be glorified that your name will be known to everyone and every living I mean this is our purpose our purpose to glorify your kingdom to expand your kingdom only for your name for your glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen Good morning, Impact Church. Kumusta po kayo? And uh, welcome to our, of course, live worship today. We just praise the Lord at po yung ating uh, last Sunday ng uh, buwan ng August. At uh, alam niyo na kung sinong dudunga o sa buwan ng September, di ba? At anyway, uh, palawin ka rin naman ng panahon at uh, nakakatuwa talaga no, na naisipin na uh, we're uh, almost uh, done with the half of the year. And we're just continuing to, to, to pray no, na matapos, ha? Three quarters of the year. Three quarters of the year. Grabe talaga yung natin. Three quarters of the year. Uh, almost uh, done. And uh, patapos ng year, we pray na matapos sa limpo. Yung, uh, of course, sinakarap natin na pandemic. And uh, uh, we continue to trust the Lord for that. And uh, pray na yung uh, goodness ni Lord talaga uh, mag-prevail dito. Anyway, gusto natin bagiin yung mga kasama natin ngayon sa live worship. Si Ate Wendy, si Tiago, si... Uh, Gladys Ramos, Joby Ramos, si Nina nanonood din, si Art, si uh, Jeff Rambacod, Kiko Di Pinagracia, Spencer Manrique, Audrey Blatch, uh, Rainier, si Ate Badet Heradura, si Carl Dugilio, si Sheena Marie, si Marian Arquilla, si John Lloyd Torres, si Chelsea Rodriguez, at si... At syempre may mga bisita tayo ngayon. Alam nyo ba na kamis, di ba, na binabati natin yung mga bisita natin every Sunday. Pero sa live, may mga new names din ako nakita, new people, na hindi man new faces kasi dati makita yung mukha nila. But we want to greet them, no? So kumatiin si Wendy Rose Alapat. Yan, yeah, nag-comment siya. At uh, siya ay kasama natin ngayon. Hi, good morning. Si uh, Ann Lloyd Flores. Uh, hi, Ann Lloyd. At saka si Nika Pasqual. Hi! And uh, salamat sa Panginoon kasi we want to reach more and more people. Pwede niyo pong i-share no, yung ating live every Sunday and to reach more people na makarinig ng salita ng Panginoon. Praise the Lord. At meron itong uh, napaka-importante comment ni Sir Daniel Ramos. Ang sabi niya, <laughs> nakakamiss daw yung pagpapakanta ng tribes ni uh, Dean at ni JC. Huwag kang makilala ko sila Uh, time on God, napapakanta natin yan ng Elite Tribes. Mukhang excited na talaga yung sumayaw si Coach Dad habang nag-reworship. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, tayo po ito pa ako sa ating mga announcements for today. At unahan natin yan sa pagbati ng ating mga birthday celebrants. Ayan na, ito na. Okay. Sa ato na to, ah, nag-iliyaw na tayo yung birthday. Pastor Gerard Ozzia! Okay. Happy Happy Birthday! Ngayong araw po yan. Makatikim tayo ng kanyang cake. <laughs> And uh, gusto natin mati yung September 2, si Brad Mir Fernandez! Brad Mir, ha? Okay. At um, kasabay niya, tatlo sila, mga klase sa isang araw lang, ha? Si Christian Escueta! Gusto natin sa kasi nga. Alam namin na uh, medyo malayo pa, pero... Happy birthday sa'yo! At ang nakatira sa Las Piñas at ang ating campus volunteer, counselor ng youth, si Mr. Olim Aki! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Olim, okay, happy birthday ha! Birthday. So, magkasunod pala kayo ni ano, ni Gerard. Mga masarap ang kainan natin ito. Okay, sa September 3, ito, kasama namin ito sa team at saka pamangunto ni uh, Kuya Bali, si Prince Yuan Narcida. Ayan. Yuan, happy uh, birthday, September 3 yan. At pagkatapos niyan, ay maniliwang din si Ate Jean Megraso. Ate Jean, from Kainta. Oh, nasa Kainta na sila ngayon. No? Happy birthday, Ate Jean. And uh, we praise the Lord for those celebrations. Our happy anniversary, Kai. 
<laughs> Kuya Victor at Ate Miriam Laneta! Happy, happy wedding anniversary! Wow! Kiss naman dyan! <laughs> okay! Um, gusto nating uh, i-announce na yung ating Brigada Eskwela ay tuloy-tuloy talaga. At puri ng Panginoon kasi nakapunta na po kami sa mga campuses na partners natin for this year. Nabigay na po natin yung daan-daan lang yung ano, yung pag... Okay. Nabigay natin yung uh, books na COVID uh, title title book, How to Face COVID, yung face mask ng Impact Church, yung ating brochure na nandyan, at of course, ayan, pwede mo nang i-move. At of course, attentive na nga yung si Eko. Uh, yung ating mga... <laughs> Ito, panibagong campus ko ah, na napuntahan natin. Fernando Amos, Amorsolo Senior High School. Okay, kung hindi nyo alam kung nasaan yan, eh, uh, malapit lang po yan sa... sa uh, taan? Sa K6, sa Q-Mart, ano yung tawid na Kamuning ba yan? O Kamuning, parang ano. Okay. Extension na Extension po ito ng Ramon Magsaysay. At nabahaginan din natin ito ng books at face masks natin. Wow! So ilang campus na nang narinig natin? Ay, hindi ba di siya? Anim! Anim! Okay, anim na po. Ayan po, nandun kami sa Don Quintin Paredes High School. Ayan. At sa Ramon Magsaysay High School, Cubao. Sa Juan Sumulong High School. Sa Cap General Emilio Aguinaldo High School. At sa Quirino High School. Purihin ng Panginoon. Ang dami na mga pagtahan. Tuwang-tuwa po ang mga principal, mga heads na nandun to receive yung blessing from the Lord through Impact Church. Dahil hindi naman, itong mga router na to, ay marami na rin po mga sudyante ang nakatanggap at tuwang-tuwa sila no? habang pinipirma nila yung, uh, <laughs> yung pag-receive nila yan. Ito yung uh, pilit sa mga sudyante natin na nakatanggap ng mga router gamitin nila sa kanilang pag-aaral gamitin din natin sa pagbabible study natin making sure na meron silang connection para ma-reach natin sila at maidala natin yung salita ng Panginoon sa kanilang lahat Praise the Lord! Salamat po sa lahat ulit ng mga nagbigay sa ating project na ito magpalain po kayo ng ating Panginoon Gusto rin natin uh, sabihin na uh, ngayong uh, linggo ito eh, uh, nag-ibot-ibot po kami at uh, dinala po namin uh, konting regalo sa ating mga volunteers. Kasi po, every year ay uh, in-appreciate natin yung ating mga volunteers sa church. Kasi hindi po natin sila kayang bayaran. Ano? Hindi natin sila kayang bayaran. Pero yung service kasi nila, talagang binibigyan nila for the church and for the Lord. At gusto po namin sabihin sa kanila, no? pangitiin lang sila. Nagdala po kami ng uh, konting gift no? na pwede nila lutuin na mabango at masarap. <laughs> Nag-iwag po kami from Kainta, papunta po sa uh, Antipolo, papunta po rin sa, sa Kingsville, papunta sa Quezon City, papunta sa Balintawak. No? Marami po kaming nalibot upang uh, mapasaya po ang ating mga volunteers ngayong linggong ito. Saludo po kami sa inyo. Salamat sa pag-volunteer sa Impact Church. At mamaya makita niyo po yung video natin. Yan. Meron po tayong video para sa kanila. Praise the Lord! Tayo po ay dumako sa ating pagbibigay ng uh, tithes and offerings sa ating Panginoon. In 1 Corinthians 29.14, it says, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, let's give from our hearts ating Panginoon ng tithes at ng offering natin para sa Kanya. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Lord, sa kamutihan mo sa amin. And uh, in spite of this pandemic that's happening, tapat ka pa rin. You provide for what we need. And whatever it is that we are facing and struggling with, Panginoon, alam namin, merong solusyon. Pagkat meron kami kasamang Diyos sa buhay namin. Patuloy mo ipaalala sa amin, Panginoon, how good you are, how faithful you are. At patuloy mo pong i-move 
kami, Panginoon, sa pagbibigay namin sa iyo more generously every time we grow with it. Kaya salamat, Panginoon. Bless this uh, aming uh, mga tithes and offering to you. And bless the words of our hands for them. It's a prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give unto the Lord. some news about pastors and other members of other alliance churches that are positive. So let's continue to pray for them. Um, whew, thank you very much po sa lahat ng volunteers. Yung outro po natin for this Sunday's worship would be your videos, your pictures. We are so grateful. Sabi po sa akin ng isang isang volunteer, hindi mo talaga ako mababayaran. Ang sabi ko, hindi po talaga. Kasi, hindi po talaga binabayaran ng volunteers. <laughs> Very po. Hindi po namin kaya ngayong bayaran. We are so grateful, thankful to the Lord for all the volunteers from the worship team to the preachers to videographers, especially this time to I'd like to specially mention the kids ministry who's doing their job very well. Maraming maraming salamat. At may mga dalawang simbahan na po ang nagsasabi sa amin na pwede bang hiramin ang mga videos nyo at pakita namin sa inyo maraming mga, yung, mga kids. No? And we said, of course, yes, no problem about that. And we are just so thankful to the Lord for volunteers and uh, sobra po uh, hindi po namin kaya mag-isa uh, but with you we can do everything uh, we are grateful also for the Lord that He keeps on sustaining the church for our needs we continue to pray that, in continue Lord, uh, that the Lord will continue to bless you as you also will bless the church um, if you've noticed the whole month of August, aside from, from not preaching main lang, <laughs> nagpahinga po ako. Pero at the same time, we were looking at in the Empowered Church. It's a series break from Unstoppable, but we will go back to Unstoppable second Sunday of September. Am I right, Pastor Jero? Yes, we are going back there. But today, we'll talk about the Unstoppable Movement. Have you ever wondered how did Peter lead the church that way? Paano kaya ni 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 Pedro ang simba ng English ng Panginoong Jesus nung mga panahon na yun. As a lead pastor, I would ask that question. How would Peter work and how would he respond to things? Diba? 
Paano yung the Lord added 3,000 in one day? The other day, He added 5,000. So, 1,000 na yun. Merong point sa Acts na sinabi niya, hindi na nila binilang kasi sobra-sobra ang dami na. And from a movement that's so small, papaano kaya nila na kaya yung movement na ito? Last Sunday, Pastor Jero said, um, work on this, on this passage, no? on this verse. Jesus said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you have me to do. Finishing the work that you have me to do. That was before the cross. Just before the cross. Two, uh, two chapters after uh, John 19. Cross na. There's only one Savior. Jesus has to finish it that way. Pero what was he talking about? Ano yung sinasabi ni Jesus? Hindi pa naman siya resurrected nitong panahon na to. Diba? And that's what we want, uh, want to discuss today and work on today. But before we continue, let's pray. Lord, we are grateful for who you are. We are grateful, Lord, that you are our great Messiah. That we can build our lives around you. And be assured that you will be our peace. You will be our guide. You will be our strength. You will be our stronghold. Father, as we open your word, as we look at and be amazed at the Lord Jesus Christ, allow us to fall in love with Him all the more, deeper, deeper in love with Jesus Christ as we offer our lives to Him. Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Jero led us to this points last Sunday, di ba? Uh, five points. A Christian would need to hear about Jesus Christ. He would have a special encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I would ask you, kung bawat isa sa atin magkwento kung anong encounter natin sa Panginoong Jesus, I, I believe that eternity Kailangan natin yung eternity. Kasi lahat tayo magkwento. Di ba? Kasi ganun natin na i-counter si Jesus everyday. We have to surrender to God's call. Ano yun? Every time we sing the song, uh, ano yung huli niyong kanta? Lord of all. Uh, I would hear people or see people crying, raising their hands because they want to surrender to God. But we also need to follow his instruction and fulfill God's work. That's according to Pastor Jero. He, he, he based that on our discipleship pathway. Engage, evangelize, establish, equip, and empower. Uh, at any given level, you have to go down and engage the world. This is not originally us, ours. Uh, Si Pastor June Ardina, our tatay, coined these terms, but the process, pau paulit-ulit lang yan. Whatever words na pwede namin hindihin dyan, pare-pareho lang. Pero point being, is that we need to engage the word. We let, they need to hear about Jesus Christ. They need to have an encounter with Christ. They need to surrender to the call of Christ. They need to follow instructions, equip and then they need to be to fulfill God's work. Last anniversary, we told you that this year we want to complete the process. The first four years of Impact Search, the Lord led us to engage, evangelize, and establish. We have a lot of people there. Marami pong tayo na reach out. In terms of engagement, we don't know how many. In terms of teachers, that's about 
600 uh, books. Ah, sorry. 800 books. Meron pa pong mga isang daan sa bahay. So about 700 books that we set out and engage the world with or our world with. Uh, hindi pa po natin na reach out dito sa Diamond. But point being, there's a lot. And we're just talking about teachers. We're not yet talking about um, students that we've been reaching out. Ang basketball, kung hindi po tayo natak- natigil ng pandemic, nasa, nasa ilan na tayo? Ilang teams na tayo, June? Six teams from three teams. So, or four teams. There's so many that we can reach out. So many has received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So they are evangelized. Point. Nandun na siya. Nandun na siya. Kailangan na natin silang establish. And there's so many of them now need establishing in the being rooted in the Word. Knowing ano yung kailangan. Uh, uh, sino ka sa, sa Panginoong Jesus? Who are you? What are the things that happen when you receive Jesus Christ? Ano yung mga dapat mong sundin as a believer? Pero napadali lang nun eh. Jesus summed it up with two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And last is to love others as yourself. So we establish them by doing that. We teach them how to love But this year, we need to equip more. We need to equip more. We need to empower more. That would be basically, ito po yung magiging theme or trust ng mga pastors this year. So next month, the first BSOW for the adults will happen. Um, Uncle Rainer would lead that. He would invite the adults, couples to be with them. Uh, if you've noticed, our young people also are doing their part, uh, making sure na pagkat merong uh, small impact groups that's happening every week uh, amongst them. Si we, yung test run po natin ng online Bible study has passed. We have divided that group, a Tuesday group and Thursday group. We have divided them para mas maliliit, mas madali, mas hindi mahal mag-online kasi kukonti lang yung mag-share. Diba? We are also this week starting to shoot the video-based Bible study that we will use for our discipleship process. So, basically, Jesus, we're following the pattern of Christ. Engage the world. We evangelize them, tell them about the kingdom, tell them about Jesus Christ. But we have to root them, katulad ng preaching ni Pastor Gerard, that they need to stick to the vine so that they will bear much fruit. Pero sticking to the vine, you need to be pruned. You need to be equipped. Kailangan may pinuputol-putol na maling, maling sanga sa bagay, sa bagay ba, sa buhay natin, di ba? And the same time, we need to be empowered. We are. Ref- I, I was reflecting early this ECQ season. What's the problem with our discipleship process in the current church today? The problem is the last two. Pag nasa established na po yung tao, We just let them there, sit there, have the sitting ministry forever. In Impact Church, we want you to be equipped, to be empowered, because this is the model of Christ. Basically, this is the model of Christ. That's why it's easy for Him to leave. Kahit tatlong taon lang po, tatlong taon, kalahati lang po siya ng ministeryo sa, sa mundo, He can lead easily because He made sure that He equipped the workers and empowered the ministers. 
So today, if you have your Bibles with you, will you please open it to Luke chapter 9? And we'll just stay on Luke chapter 9. Let me read to you some of the passages there, some of the uh, verses there. And then I will glean from it five points, five observations about Jesus Christ and put up five questions to you today. Okay? Let me... Let's go to the passage. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. If you want to join me in reading, you may. Say in mga bahay-bahay. When Jesus had called the twelve together, He gave them the power and the authority to drive out all demons and cure all disease, diseases. He sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Pero binilinan, nila, binilinan sila ni Christ. He said, He told them, Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no binding, no extra shirt. Ano ba yung amoy nila? <laughs> Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave, leave the town. Leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they sent out. You see, the, the, the disciples, the twelve here, follows Jesus immediately. Right? Kahit na ang bilin, walang, walang pagkain, Hindi po pwedeng ganun si Jelani ngayon. Walang pera, walang tungkod, walang damit. Pero they set out and went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. See, there's power that was given to them and they use that power so that they can heal everywhere. Is it a special power that we can't have, definitely, pwede po natin makuha yun. So, I'll skip some verses. Let's go to chat, verse 10. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they have done. Then, He took them with Him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them, Jesus welcomed everyone, and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they can go to their surrounding villages and countryside to find food and lodging because they, we are here in a remote place. He replied, You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. They answered, We only have five loaves of bread, two fish, unless we go buy food for all this crowd. They can't. There are about 5,000 men. Hindi pa po kasama yung women during that time and the kids. 5,000 men. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of 50 each. The disciples did. So everyone sat down taking five loaves Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, broke them, then he gave them to the disciples, distributed it to the people. They all ate, they were satisfied. Let's remember, gutom na gutom po to mga taong to. They were satisfied. The disciples picked up 12 basket full of broken pieces that was left over. Some people will spiritualize this thing and say that 12 baskets mean 12 times of Israel, etc., etc. I don't think so. It's a saying that sobrang dami po talaga 
ng pinakain nila, sobra-sobra pa rin yung pagpapala ng Diyos. At this point in time, in the harmony of the Gospels, in the chronology of the Gospels, Jesus was preparing His disciples for Him to leave, for His eventual death. And he, they were pounding Him with, this, with, with miracles, uh, miracles after miracles after miracles, healing and all of these things. And this one, this feeding of the 5,000 is such a big thing. Napakalaking bagay po nito, mga kapatid. Di ba? Nasa remote place sila. And we were there ni Pastor Gerald dito sa place na to. In Bethsaida. The old Bethsaida. Not the new Bethsaida. And you will see talagang bundok. Bundok-bundok siya. And wala kang mapupuntahan para bumili ng pagkain nor walang catering business na makakapagpakain ng 5,000 people. 5,000 men for that matter during that time. So most probably this is manna from heaven reproduced or simply a miracle from God. Minsan po, di ba gano'n tayo? We looked at life as if Walang mangyayari sa atin, pero the Lord will just provide something. But, what can we learn from this particular point or chunk ng scripture, ng, past, ng, ng story ni Jesus Christ? What can we learn about Christ and His kingdom? What can we learn about Christ and His kingdom? Jesus Christ made sure that He equipped the twelve before He left. He made sure that they would know how to heal the sick. How to pray. How to depend on the Spirit. He made sure that they follow God's Word. The Torah. He made sure na, okay, you can connect to my Father. If you lack something, you just pray connect to the Father. Right? Ginawa na yun. He gave them authority, gave them the power, to drive out the demons according to Luke chapter 9 verse 1. The second point, Jesus made them count the cost of the task of the movement, in the movement. Diba? He said, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Deny yourself of your Deny yourself totally. When Jesus Christ, no, tinanong po ni, when Jesus Christ said to the disciples, what as what's the cause of disciple discipleship? He said to take up our cross, ah, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. In making disciples, there's so many costs in the movement. When I hear impact leaders, impact small group leaders telling me, Ay nako KR, hindi po sila nagpupunta sa some small group. Ay nako KR, good luck po sa Star Network, good luck po sa, sa signal kasi wala po. Nawawala-wala po sila. Ay ganito po, ay nako ganito ganyan. Is it equated to no bag, no food, no bread, no money, no whatsoever? Not yet, right? Hindi pa eh. So we need to push ourselves further. Ang hirap lang ngayon. Paano mo talaga ipupush yung mga tao? 
But Jesus Christ made sure to tell everyone, to tell all his disciples the cause of the movement. At that point, the, for Peter, is leaving his family. Wife, kids, maybe. For James and John, living there, leave. Iniwanan nila yung tatay nila. Na trinayin sila maging mga maging isda. All their life. They have to take it kalikuran, tapos sundin ng Panginoong Jesus. Jesus made sure that they count the cost. Jesus also made them experience the realities in the movement. That there are people who will deny you. May mga, may mga uh, tao na hindi ka papakinggan. May mga tao na iiwanan ka. May mga tao na curious Mahihinig sa'yo sandali, pero eventually, when the hard things come, they will leave. John 6.66 G- the, the disciples deserted Jesus Christ. Some of the disciples deserted Jesus Christ and His claims. Because of His claims. Reality is like 5,000 men pinakain because meron lang limang bread, dalawang isda. Reality is like the dead Lazarus rising up from the dead. Realities of friendships like that of Mary and of Martha. Magkapatid sila pero si Jesus Christ the reality of friendship doon, ni Jesus Christ sa kanila. The only time that was recorded that Jesus Christ wept was when? When Lazarus was dead. See, you see the realities of friendships there. Both the realities here would be both positive and negative. Yet, he made sure that, okay, I'll let you know how to share the kingdom of God by teaching you how to do that. During the time of Christ, ang ginawa niya, sabi niya, I'll send, I'll send you out two by two, or he sent his twelve, go to proclaim the kingdom of God, I have given you authority. This is what we, we have read. Diba? But search nowadays, how do we train people? How do we equip people? Let's have a seminar. Now let's have a webinar and teach you how to share the gospel. Dito po sa church, we make sure that when we do that, we train you to go back. Tatapon po namin kayo sa dagat. To go back to the, the world that we have, we're engaging with and share the gospel and learn from it. And then you can go back to us. Ah, ito pala yun, ito pala yun. Diba? We need to practice. We need to experience those realities. If we don't experience those realities, then it would not stick to our minds. Jesus made sure of that. Jesus also made sure that he was able to affirm and correct the disciples. He affirms them. Ay, okay, maganda yan. Maganda yung ginawa. Diba? Pero he would also correct them saying, You of little faith, until when will I be with you? There's two accounts 
of the feeding of the multitude. Di ba po? There's the feeding of the 5,000 and there's the feeding of the 4,000. There's four major differences into that. And if you would see, isa po sa clear, isa po sa very clear na actually, di pa very clear. Doon mo na ako sa isa to sa mga natutunan ko when I was, I went to Israel. Because at this point, you will see the difference where Bethsaida was, the Gentile region Bethsaida, kung nasaan siya, and kung nasaan yung feeding of the 4,000, which is the other side of the lake. Kung titignan ko po dito sa Metro Manila, nasa Quezon City po ang Bethsaida, Dulong po ba ang Quezon City? Masa naman laki Quezon City. Kung ba ang Quezon City, yun pong Decapolis, which is another region, is approximately nasa Taguig. O yung kabilang ilog na ng Basi. At Taguig, Makati. That area. And you see, that's, that's far. Pero the kingdom of God was, He, he, he made sure that to correct them. Jesus made sure to correct them. Why am I putting the difference of the 5,000 and the 4,000 here? You, you see the major difference. So feeling of the, the 5,000, as we have read, the disciples were the ones initiating. Sinasabi niya, Lord, send them away. Pauwi mo na sila so that they can go to the villages and towns. But, Ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, let them sit down. So, feeding of the 4,000, Mark chapter 8, Jesus was the one initiating it. During those days, another, another large crowd pointing that there's another group, this is not the same group, gathered. Since they have nothing, Jesus called the disciples and said, I have compassion for these people. They have been with me for three days, nothing to eat. If I send them home, they will collapse along the way because some of them came from a long distance. It was Jesus who initiated the, the miracle. Hindi ka tulad sa 5,000, the disciples were the ones initiating it. Lord, try to do something. Ang dami namin, o. Oh. Ang dami namin nadala sa'yo. Ang dami namin dinala sa'yo. Kasi remember, di ba? They just went from village to village proclaiming the kingdom of God. And then, people were... Saan sa nang nagaling yung 5,000 people na yun? Because they... they people received healing, people received the message of the kingdom of God, so they went there. Pag ikaw bisita mo, di ba mahihiya ka pag gutong sila? So si G, yung mga disciples, sinabi kay Jesus, Uy Lord! Lord, pakain mo na sila! Ay, pauwi mo na sila, kawawa naman sila eh. Pabalikin na lang natin sila dito. And then, that's the time, that's the only time that Jesus made that miracle. One day lang yun ha? Pero when we go to Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, three days na daw kong gutom, three days na yung mga tao that was with Jesus Christ during that time. And the disciples were not doing anything. Have you noticed? Si Jesus Christ said in verse 1 of chapter, Mark chapter 8, called the disciples and said, I have compassion to these people. For these people, they have already been here three days and they have nothing to eat. Noong una-una ko pong tinuturo to, pre-niche to, ang sabi ko, siguro difference ito dalawang buwan. I was corrected when the last, the, the last time we went to Israel. It's about two, three months away apart 
na no? yung feedings na to, hindi siya ganun kadali. So, naubos na yung 12 baskets full. Pero point being, first miracle, it was initiated by the disciples. The second miracle was initiated by Christ. Why? Because they were in a different place. They were in the Decapolis. And the Decapolis was the evil area during the time. The non-Jewish area at that time. The sinful city is the Decapolis. The ten cities. Yan yung mga Roman Empire lands where all this, this big, uh, pagan worshippers are. So ayaw nila. They're out of their comfort zone. The race no mga tao sa 5,000 was the Jews. Sa 4,000, it was the Gentiles. And they don't want to do anything about the Gentiles. Remember the problem with, G with Peter in Acts? Ayaw niya ibigay yung message kay, kay Paul? And even the centurion? Remember that story? Jesus was giving them a change in priority here. That the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of Jesus Christ was not just for the Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. And the disciples were uncomfortable with that. Ayaw nila. I don't know for what reason. But they don't like it. Para tayo, di ba? We don't want to be outside our comfort zone. Right? A pastor tells you to share the gospel to that person. You don't want to do that. And Munsan was uh, telling a story na nasiraan siya minsan sa, sa Singapore and no one wants to help him except this Indian guy na driver ng isang truck. And nung lumapit yung Indian guy sa kanya, ang sabi sa kanya ng Holy Spirit, share the gospel to this person. Hindi niya sinare yung gospel. Pumanda ng sasakyan. Sandali. Maya-maya namatay na naman yung sasakyan niya. Lo and behold, this same guy na tumulong sa kanya came to him. Give help again. And the Spirit said, share the gospel. Sometimes, people were forced to go to our uncomfortable zones. Am I right? To follow Christ. And that's basically, yun po yung equipping sign ng disciple making. We go to, an arc, to, to the uncomfortable ends of the, the realm and trust Jesus Christ that He would help us go through it. Jesus corrects and affirms His disciples. There are four things I already have said about Christ. He made sure that He equipped the twelve. He made sure that they count the task, the cause of the task. He, ex he made them experience the realities of the, the movement. Fourth is He affirms and corrects them. The fifth is He made sure that they will succeed. Jesus made sure that the, His church would succeed. Are you ready for that? When Jesus said to the twelve, I'll give you the power to, to, to tell of others and proclaim the kingdom of God, they went to village to village, 5,000 people came. Right? When Peter and John preached the silver or gold, I have none. 3,000 people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the church is still existing now because Jesus made sure that we will succeed. And we succeed because there's the power of the Spirit in us and through us. There's so much more. Marami pa po. Pala, sobrang dami pa. I know. If you have encountered Jesus Christ as your provider, as your healer, why not allow Him to in, allow Him to encounter you in so many other ways? Sharing the gospel to others. Nabalitaan po kami dito eh. Nakipag-usap po sa isang insurance agent. Sinir yung gospel sa insurance, insurance agent. Ayan. Sometimes, we doubt ourselves. But in that doubt, Jesus will empower us and strengthen us. He made sure that we will be successful. As a church, He made sure that we will be successful. Let me post five questions to you briefly as you reflect. Then you go. The power of God is in the church. He has set up everything para tayo po ay magsaksi. Let me pose these questions to you personally. First, Jesus continues to call. He continues the call to for you to be a disciple of Him. Are you willing to be one? A disciple that would deny himself, take up his cross, and follow him every day of their lives. Jesus knows his church will succeed, it will be successful. In spite of this pandemic, in spite of what wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, whatsoever, the church of Jesus Christ will succeed. Question is, are you willing to be a player or just as a, a spectator sitting down watching the victory march? Magpapabangko ka ba? O ikaw ay maglalaro? Magpapabangko ka ba? O instead na bangko ka, magtitrain ka, magpapaykwip ka, you will make sure that you will be a player not just an expectator o spectator. Jesus trusts that you can do it. Are you willing to be equipped to be a growing disciple maker? Not just a disciple, but a disciple maker of Christ. He trusts you. Pinagkakatiwalaan ka nila. Can you trust yourself? That in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of my weakness, the Lord will help me, the Lord will guide me to become a disciple maker. Jesus continues to equip his disciples. Are you willing to join knowing that it can be hard? And it's hard. 
Marami po nang sasabi sa akin, mga bata, mahirap kay Irish. Kasi magsasabi mo dali. I don't think Jesus Christ said that thing that it would just be easy. He said His yoke will be light. His burden will be light. But it's not easy. It's painful. You need to give. Sometimes you need to give even if Nandun ka na sa pinaka-bottom. Latak na lang. Pero you have to give it away. Will you still join and be a player? Jesus assures the expansion of His church. This church will expand because Jesus is our Lord and this is His church. Are you willing to do your part? I came across a quotation by Sir John Henry Newman. It says, God has created me to do some definite service. God has committed some work to be which God has not committed to another. I have a mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told to the next. I am a link in a chain, a bond, connect, a bond connection between persons. God has not created me for nothing. God did not create me for nothing. People of God, God created you for something. Nilikha po tayo ng Diyos dahil may dapat po tayo gawin. Kung sinasabi ng mundo na wala kang kwenta, kung sinasabi ng mundo na wala kang ginagawa, pinapaalala ko po sa inyo na yung umamang ito, may pinapagawa sa inyo si Lord. In fact, Your role in this church, in that church, is uniquely yours. I affirm all our volunteers. Because they, there are things na hindi ko po kaya, pero kaya nila. Question is, are we willing to serve? Because we need more. As we continue to expand the kingdom, we need more. We still have about 25 routers downstairs that we would distribute this week. 25 routers means 25 families we can reach to and enter their lives. Puno-puno na po yung staff. Puno-puno na po yung mga volunteers. We need more who wants to make it. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to say, Would you be like Jesus Christ telling in heaven, Lord, I have finished the work you have made me to do. Would that be your goal? To worship the Father To worship Jesus Christ, not just through singing. Hindi lang dahil kumakanta tayo, sumasayaw tayo sa heaven, but we worship Him, telling Him, Lord, nagtapos ko po yung pinapagawa niyo. Jesus, here are the things that you asked me to do. Ito po yung effect niya. As a church, as ministers of the church, as your pastors, we believe that God wants you to do something. We invite you to join us, be equipped, be empowered for the greater glory of His name. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, you are the truth that never ends. You are the promise of the things that is yet to come. You are the completion of everything here on earth. Lord, we thank you for calling us to be yours. Lord Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to see who you are. Kung sino ka, kung ano ang kaya mong gawin sa buhay namin. Panginoong Jesus, tulungan mo nga po kami. Bawat isa po sa amin. Na ipakilala, ihayag sa ibang tao kung sino ka at ano ang nagawa mo sa buhay namin. At ano ang pwede mong gawin sa buhay nila. Gamitin mo nga po ang aming mga buhay. Gamitin mo nga po kami, Panginoon. Gano'n man kabasag yung buhay namin, O Diyos. Sa dami ng mga pinagdaanan namin mali, sa tingin namin na hindi na namin kaya magbago. But when you affirm us today, Lord Jesus, of our calling, of the purpose that you have created us, that you have created us for, Lord Jesus, we just want to worship you. To sing to you. To tell of your wonders. But Lord Jesus, we also want to offer our lives to you. For this life for you ask for this life he told us to deny ourselves take up our cross and follow you Lord you know the heart of each person in this room to those who are watching you know their hearts father Work on it, O God. Accept our lives as a pleasing, holy sacrifice for your glory, for your honor. We give you grace. Amen. And amen.